Hi everybody, it's the 21st of July 2020 and update 8.1 has just gone live on the public test server for console. Um, it's been live on the PC test server for a while and it actually goes live for PC uh, on the public servers tomorrow on the 22nd I believe and uh, it will go live on the public servers for console on July the 30th so I thought so I thought if I can put my teeth in properly probably just need a quick sip of coffee I thought it'd be a good idea to go through the patch notes so we can see what's coming the biggest thing you probably know already is the updated Sanhok map um, with the new loot truck that is going to be traveling around that you can shoot to get loot boxes up let's see um, let's see what the official PUBG post has to say Season 8 is here and brings massive changes to the island of Sanhok. A new way to gear up with the loot truck, the start of the next ranked season, a new survivor pass and loads more. Update 8.1 has plenty to offer, so let's get right into it. Da -da -da. Sanhok Remaster, Return to Sanhok. The main feature of Update 8.1 is of course Sanhok, which has been reworked from the ground up to look better perform better and offer more balanced gameplay. We wanted Sanhok to feel more like a forgotten, overgrown paradise while addressing some of the more glaring balance issues we've seen over the last couple of years. We're happy with what we've created and hope you are as well. Read on below for some snippets on what we've changed in some of the island's more prominent areas. Sanhok Season 8 Key Landmark Changes Boot Camp Boot Camp has been completely reworked. We wanted to keep this hot drop location while improving the feel and competitive conflict in the area. There is plenty of line of sights for long range engagements but also lots of cover for players to advance on opponents. There are underground areas for aggressive close quarters combat as well. Overall we feel the changes have amplified the risk versus reward gameplay players want from a hot drop while giving everyone more options to best approach different situations. So if you haven't seen the video already there's there's kind of a law video that shows you that the, the the guy that runs the blue zone for Sanhok is in a bunker underneath uh, the um, the boot camp and it's 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 it's, quite, it's one of the better PUBG videos to be honest. It's actually done quite well and it's a group of people who who were involved in running PUBG and then something goes wrong. There, there, there's a group of there's a squad called the Sanhok Four who break into this bunker and they obviously they, they, they take it over so I guess there's probably lots of good loot down there um, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not a big fan of PUBG expanding on the lore of PUBG because I don't think you need to you know you don't need to tell us why everything's happening <laughs> yeah, let us imagine it anyway quarry so we've got this ladder on quarry haven't we here the old version of quarry was a beloved yet terribly imbalanced experience we've done a lot of work here to make this unique location fun and fair for those who find themselves in it the stone blocks are now larger to provide better cover from opponents from the, with the high ground and we've added some perilous rope bridges to give players more options for crossing without having to go through or around all in all quarry should now be a meaningful destination for players who want long firefights and non-conventional engagements yeah because the thing about quarry was if, if you dropped one side of quarry the problem was often getting past it you know you either had to go all the way around it and with the blue moving quite fast on sanok or you would go through the, the you could run through the quarry but obviously people on the high ground would see you and get you or there was that kind of uh, road between the two parts of quarry but again that was a bit of a bottleneck so yeah it should be interesting Airford, they got rid of my beloved Mong Nai. I used to drop at Mong Nai all the time. But they've added this airstrip with a couple of um, motorized hang gliders. We've replaced the farm area in the northeast with a new airfield. The farm never got quite the attention we were hoping it would. Well, because there wasn't anything there apart from loot. So we've added some incentives for players to drop on this part of the island. The main incentive being that the airfield, perhaps unsurprise unsurprisingly, now has a chance to spawn the motor glider. This is the only place you can find it on Sanok, so grab a gas can and take to the skies. That's pretty cool. They should have the motor glider on every map. So they've got rid of docks, and we've got the party zone now, uh, called Gate Getaway. The old docks were fun, but generally were low in the loot department, especially for a drop that far away. Our replacement is the Getaway, a loot-packed resort town designed to separate tourists from their money. Featuring poolside bars, a boardwalk, Sanhok's premier dance club, and this is like it's all disco, it's all lit up inside as well. There's plenty of neon haze to go around. Just don't let it distract you from where you're hit there. I think there's a there's a room with a green screen as well. Ruins. This looks more spectacular, doesn't it? 
While the structure of the ruins itself was always hotly contested, the area surrounding it posed a severe disadvantage for anyone walking out without the proper gear. We reworked this area to make the ruins the massive labyrinthine and deadly destination. It should be with plenty of loot for those willing to raid its treasures. The only thing I worry about when you see things like this is the, the old way was that that was a really cool building because you would fight inside it, but the cover around the outside was, was a bit pants. But you know that was the risk, wasn't it? If you wanted to get to the big building to get all the loot, you had the risk of going outside. The thing that worries me about this is how w will it run smoothly? You know, will it run smoothly? That's the most important, I think, for PUBG. It has to run smoothly. So this is the top of the mountain. Yeah, they've kind of changed the art style, haven't they, for the for the ruins. The mountains, the mountainous area in San Hock certainly made for a topographical diversity. But when it came to actual gameplay implications, there were a number of issues here. Players caught up here with the blue zone approaching were left with a few options, one of which was jumping and hoping for the best. A few have been, you've probably been, been there. The other is the straight up high ground advantage with little to no counterplay for those caught below. With these thoughts in mind, we've added additional pathways to reach it, adding some flanking options for the team with the high ground to defend against. Yeah, that was several games on Sanok, probably more than several, you, you would you'd either be stuck down below and the blue zone would move and you'd have a cliff in front of you that you couldn't possibly get up, or you'd be on the top and you'd have a cliff in front of you that you possibly couldn't, couldn't get down. Um, now you... This, this happens in lots of um, battle royales. It even happens in Warzone. Um, not the getting down problem, because obviously in Warzone you can use your parachute, but getting up. Uh, I died to the blue last night I think where the circle shifted and I couldn't get up a cliff while undoubtedly a frustrating situation if you do make the right call and get into a situation where the shift doesn't kill you that feels really good and it's made you feel like oh, tactically I've done really well here. so we'll have to see and again these buildings are much more complicated so we'll have to make sure that it runs smoothly on console cave I've changed it, haven't they? We've designed, redesigned the cave to have the fiction we always wanted to have. You can still get your thrills through the scariest vertical drop, pull drop in PUBG, but now there's a cool subterranean temple waiting for you to explore should you survive the fall. Yeah, it kind of looked like it was a place that was under construction before, didn't it, with these kind of odd ramps going around, around these bits? But I guess, yeah, well, well, we'll have to have a look around and see. The river. Now, this, this, this is, could be really good, this. Our main goal with the river is to give players more options to traverse it. Original San Hart gave very few places to cross without diving straight into the water, so we've added more bridges for crossing, additional cover on some existing bridges, and more cover on riverbanks. Should fire fights open there. Open so we know one of the big problems with San Hart was that if you jumped far and the circle was the other side of the map, if you were coming like through boot camp at... Uh, across the, the river was really wide there wasn't it and people knew this and people would be camping on the other side of the river shooting at you as you were going along um, and there was also the rocks so that if you were swimming across the other way towards boot camp you couldn't you know there were certain beaches that you had to get to so this is good so again I'm, I've got two minds with, with stuff like this because what happened with Vikendi was that they took a map that was really dynamic had lots of different things in it but undoubtedly didn't run well um, at, at certain times and in certain places. And they kind of took all the edges off it, you know, and just turned it into um, something that I don't think is that special anymore. You know, Vikendi was always one of my favourite maps because you had all these really different locations. And obviously it was the snow, so it looked very different. Where now they've kind of, it's kind of this mottled brown colour with... with, with snow mixed with you know normal ground they took away some of the bigger towns you know they took away you know the, the extreme features and and that, that makes it flow better in terms of probably competitive play i think a lot of this comes from competitive play and i don't think that's always a great idea you know because the pro scene and the competitive players would be like look you can't have a situation where we have no options you know, we can't have a situation in the pro scene where we're stuck at the bottom of a cliff and we can't get up because that's not right, that's not fair, and that's not competitive. We always need to have an option of something to do. And so you end up with 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 maps where there's always something to do. And it's like, well, real life isn't really like that. And one of the reasons we really enjoy PUBG, I think, or I used to really enjoy it, and kind of I mean I still enjoy it to a certain extent now, 
is the fact that you would get in these situations that were impossible. And it would be very frustrating if you were on the losing side. But if you're on the winning side, it felt really, really good. Because imagine you're on top of one of these cliffs. And you're like, right, I'm set here. And there's, then a the guy managed to sneak up behind you. You know, you wouldn't probably feel too great about that. Pinan, Cow, Sanmi, and Kampong. The towns have all received some reworking, adding verticality, interesting things to explore, new ways to fight, and most importantly, great venues to battle over the new loot truck as it passes through each town. In some cases, the changes are minor, such as simply widening the road so the truck can pass through the bigger reworks to get to create more interesting ways to battle. Okay. Ban. Oh, the tree. That was, I thought that was a really cool place. While a cool locale, Ban was underused and a pain to loot. We removed Ban and replaced it with a normal set of houses so that we can focus on using these resources for unique locations elsewhere. Due to this more simplified and familiar building layout, this area should now be a more defensible vision to loot and control. Yeah, more generic though, that's the problem. We've got these houses all over Sanhok. That was a unique place. Loot truck. The loot truck is a brand new feature that gives players an additional, albeit risky, way to gear up. Trucks spawn in one of several garages around the island and drive along roads, enticing players to attack them. As these roads take damage, as these, sorry, as these trucks take damage, they'll drop some loot and continue on their way. Players persistent enough to destroy the truck will be rewarded with an even bigger cache of weapons and gear for you and your squad. Be careful when attacking these roller behemoths though, they can take a lot of damage and doing so will certainly draw some attention. Absolutely, you will get third partied all the time when you attack these things. From what I've seen from the footage already, you kind of shoot the truck and the boxes fall out the back. And you get things like level 3 helmets, level 3 bags, level 3 vests, that sort of thing. Up to four loot trucks are spawned at the start of the match. Each truck is spawned separately inside one of the special garages scattered around the map. When a truck is destroyed, a new truck will be spawned from the garage. The total number of eight trucks can be spawned in a single match. All right, so you're going to have... The only thing, again, I worry about there is noise. You know, how noisy is this thing going to be as it's rumbling around the map and you're trying to creep up on someone? Or you won't be able to hear someone creeping up on you. Heavy armor. Loot truck can be damaged and destroyed with weapons and throwables. However, the loot truck takes this decreased damage due to its heavy armor. As the loot truck receives damage, it will start to drop lootables or small or large containers. Dropped containers can be looted. When the truck's durability hits zero, the truck will explode and give access to a large amount of best loot, including possible exclusive loot, weapon loot. Exclusive weapons are weapons with a pre-applied skin and a unique name. Oh, that's good. I've always thought that one of the PUBG should have weapons that you can pick up that have all the attachments already on them. You know, a bit like like in Warzone with, with the special weapons. You should definitely, you know, if you get a even in um, even in supply drops, you know, there should be like a, an M416 that, that's fully kitted out, that sort of thing. Uh, Along with a, you know a proper loot drop weapon. Loot trucks are only spawned in normal matches during the 8.1 update. Balance update. Remastered Sanhok will feature mostly similar item spawns compared to previous versions of Sanhok. However, the Panzerfaust has now been added to the World Spoon Lot. World Spawn Loot. Vehicle spawns in Sanhok have been slightly adjusted to fit the new map. Some vehicle spawn spots were deleted to make way to the new loot truck's path. I wonder what happens if you put put vehicles in the way of the loot truck. I guess it probably just pushes them out of the way the same way the train does. Weather. Remaster Sunup will feature clear day, sunrise, sunset, and overcast weather types. Due to the remake of Gate Getaway, previously Docks, the Docks map is now removed from the TDM map selection. Updated Sanhok will be available on both normal and ranked matches, as well as in custom matches. Old Sanhok will no longer be available in all game modes. New Sanhok theme lobby and exclusive BGM has been updated. Adjusted the fade effect of the blue zone wall to look more natural. Yeah, I guess when they changed it, to when it, you had like this hard line where it looked like a cone coming in, I thought that looked a bit silly. Another, it's another case of PUBG changing something, then changing it back. And then we'll have the new Survivor Pass Payback. With the new season comes a new Survivor Pass. Survivor Pass Payback lets you earn nearly 100 new skins as you explore the remastered island of Sanok. Complete special missions to unlock unique weapon skins and face paints. We've also increased the XP you can earn through playing and surviving up to 7,200 XP per day just playing the game. Deleted mission tabs. Following 
the following three mission tabs were deleted from Survivor Pass Community, Progression, and Beginner. Okay, so hopefully they've simplified it because it was a bit of a nightmare. Changes in season missions. After the update, unlike before, all missions will be opened rather than waiting for each mission to be opened every month. Oh, right, okay. That's good. Complete all four types of Sandlot related missions to earn total four different weapon skins. Challenge mission. These are challenging missions based on the theme survival. They're composed of a total of 16 missions capable of earning four makeup items. Survivor Pass XP. Now players will be able to acquire more XP proportional to the time survived in normal and ranked matches. Players can earn approximately 600 XP per hour of normal gameplay and a maximum of 7,200 XP. XP per day. Gameplay gas can improvements. The gas can improvements, which were postponed from update 7.2, are now back with some changes. Changes from the 7.2 patch. Spilled fuel. All right. So basically, what what they were going to be put in was the idea that you could empty gas cans of fuel, and the fuel would pool like in an area, and then you could then light it by shooting it. Also, so it'd be like a Molotov. Also, you could throw a gas can. And when it landed, it would kind of sp spill its fuel everywhere. So you could then, you know, shoot it to to to, uh, to light it. So let's see what the changes are. Spilled fuel was too easy to be spotted, making it difficult for players to make ambushes. Spilled fuel is now spilled fuel is now blend much better with the environment, making it difficult to spot. Fuel now splatter in large area puddles, so that once it's lit, flame similar to the Molotov flame. We have decreased the number of fuel cans, increased the spawn time in the training mode. Because people are lobbing them everywhere. You can now equip gas cans in the melee weapon slot. Okay, so you can hit people with them. Press attack to pour gas on the ground. Oh, is that what you have to do then? No, that'd be when you're carrying the gas can, won't it? Press attack to pour gas on the ground. It takes around 7 seconds to empty the can. Spilled fuel can be set on fire with gunshots, molotovs and grenade explosions. Fire deals the same damage as a molotov but burns longer, approximately 20 seconds. Spilled fuel evaporates in about 3.5 minutes. You can also throw the gas cans the same way as melee weapons. Aim and then press attack, which causes it to release some fuel upon landing, making it easier to ignite and explode. Jury cans cannot be picked up or reused after being thrown, but can still explode. Changes to jerry can explosions deals less damage a maximum of 40 which scales down with distance from the explosion now sets the nearby area on fire like a molotov dealing damage over time mm. Yeah, kind of interesting. I mean if somebody's camping inside a, a room You know you could you could throw a molotov uh, throw a gas can into the doorway couldn't you and then then set it on fire um, Parachute follow features Added parachute follow to help teammates land together. This feature was temporarily removed after its addition in the update 6.2 due to some technical issues which have now been resolved. During the pre-match countdown, follow UI will be shown at the bottom left of the screen. Open the map to select a teammate to follow. You can still select a teammate to follow up until exiting the plane. After selecting the teammate to follow, you can cancel on the map screen or also by holding the cancel button. PlayStation, the O, Xbox and Stadia B. Uh, sorry. PlayStation Circle, I should have said, while in the plane or while actively following a player in your parachute. If you're obstructed by a terrain or an object, your follow will be cancelled. A new icon has been added to better highlight the disable follow option. The intention behind this feature is to help make the parachuting process more convenient in team play situations. Parachuting is a skill to learn in and of itself, and every now and then you often run into teammates who don't know where or how to land. Many times you had to see teammates get knocked in the early stages of the match because they landed just too far from their teammates. With the parachute follow feature, players can simply choose a teammate to follow and safely land where they do. Super convenient for going on those quick bathroom breaks during drops too. Yeah, good point. Ranked mode. A new rank season has been begun. Rank season rewards for season 7 will be distributed to players shortly after launching into the new season. Vikendi has been added to the rank map. Pool, excuse me. Player ranks have been reset. Players will be given their initial rank after five placement matches. MMR has been soft reset, so your initial season eight replacement will be influenced by your season seven rank. Leaderboards. Game mode updates. Team placements. Ranked points acquired based on players' performance will have to account for your team placement 
rather than individual placement. When a player leaves a match, even though teammates are still alive, placement points will be calculated based on the team placement at the very moment when the player leaves the match. So that's quite interesting. So it depends on what your team does, not just what you do. And then you've got to stay watching them <laughs> until the end. If the player decides to stay with the team match and the team, team wins the chicken dinner, the player's placement point will be considered as first place. Bonus kill points. When killing an enemy player whose rank is higher than five divisions, e.g. silver five, killing gold five, player will be able to earn a bonus RP. The greater the difference in rank tiers, the more bonus RP granted to players. Granted players. Killing a higher rank player will grant bonus battle points rank points as well. Our rank points growth rate adjustment. In order to have players reach the rank best matching their skills, we have adjusted the rank point growth rate 50% greater. The minimum survival mastery level to participate in rank mode has been increased to level 40. Okay. <laughs> However, as you'll notice, there's no game mode update to put solo ranked or duos ranked into the game. And you'll probably know my thoughts about this already. I don't think they should have ranked mode. I think they should have a proper leaderboard. Well, even the ranked leaderboard and just apply that to public matches. <laughs> That's what we used to do and it worked fine. Um, ranked mode rule set update. With Vikendi joining the ranked, overall update has been made to the ranked mode rule set. Vikendi is now playable in the ranked mode. Vikendi's blue zone has been adjusted accordingly to match ranked mode. Vikendi's red zone has been removed, just like other maps in ranked mode. A small amount of M24 lines now spawned in the world. The DBS now spawns in the world. Mozan Nagant is now spawned in Erangel and Vikendi. A small amount of crossbow is now spawned in the world. Vehicles. Vehicles are now spawned in the on the eSports fixed spawn locations. However, in ranked mode, vehicle will not spawned in 100% possibility okay so the vehicles are going to spawn in the same places but maybe not <laughs> oh this is good motor glider is now spawned in ranked very good well done motor glider will have a small amount of fuel ready in the tank another thing well done i think they should make motor gliders indestructible as well because i hate it when you're playing in casual mode or normal mode and you come across a motor glider you think oh i really fancy a go and you get in it and it's been destroyed already uh, or that should have a visual indication that it's destroyed, like smoke is coming out of it. You know, like the cars change colour, don't they? The, the BRDM2 is no longer summable, summable, summonable with a flare gun. The BRDM2 is, has been too overpowered in rank mode than our expect, expectations. Oh, that's a shame. Ranked FPP mode. Season 7 is coming to a close and we'd like to thank all players who played and participated in the inaugural season of Ranked Mode. The first season was a bit of an experiment for us and we did not know how opening two new coups to the game would affect overall matchmaking and how the, our community would take to them. It's clear from our data that a large majority of our players prefer ranked third person perspective. This combined with the lack of ranked FPP matches being created throughout the entire of the season will be closing the ranked FPP queue season. I could have told you that straight away you plonkers. <laughs> On console, people love playing third person. PUBG is a third person game. You know, that's why it, how it was designed to be. That's why you feel like a midget when you're playing in first person. With your feedback and suggestions, we're making some other changes to the ranked rule set, which are detailed in these patch notes. We hope you enjoy this next season of ranked. We look forward to hearing your thoughts on all changes. I would do if you put in a solo. Survival mastery. The maximum amount of survival mastery exp be available per match is now set to 1500 performance optimize the unnecessary process during opening and closing ui such as inventory and map to improve hitching desynchronize how the game loads icons in the inventory to improve improve hitching during the icon loading process the game now preloads blue zone before the game starts so that no more hitching occurs when loading a blue zone when the match starts optimize the physical actors object to improve cpu performance thread scheduling optimization to improve cpu performance sound here we go yet again they're redesigning sound footstep sound redesign and remaster in order to provide better sound following improvements have been made for more details and improvements please refer to the dev letter plan for release along with the test server update quality and details with the sound resource itself has been improved quality upgrade to footstep sounds by distance minimize the sound difference between barefoot and with a shoe equipped boo 
Improve the boost icon so that players can visually distinguish the two different stages of running boost. New splash art has been applied for players with 4K monitors. New caption has been added to the main menu. Unify the style of the drop down menu and improve much more clear understanding on control method. Improve the style of tool tips to be more consistent. Nobody, look at this, nobody checks this before they send it out, do they? Emote preview feature. You can now preview your emote from customize emote. Added the Irish language. You can now easily team up with other players if you've met in normal ranked matches. Okay, friend list has been updated. New skins. Yeah, PUBG. I, I, let me say one word when it comes to adding sims skins. All right, mil sim. That's what you want to add. Military simulation skins. Not these silly ones with cartoon characters on. You know, PUBG is a, is a fight to the death where prisoner political prisoners or criminals are sent in you know to, to, to fight to death for the for the entertainment of the masses you know this is not fun um custom matches custom matches update part one new presets have been added normal mode crossbow mode ghillie crossing world spawns only with crossbows melee weapons and throwable weapons Ghillie suits will spawn in the world. Four man squads will fight in Erringel. Initial safe zone will form around the centre of the map. One weapon wonder. Can you win a chicken dinner with your given weapon? You will start the match with one preset loadout. You will have some basic items, but no ammo. Lock items and ammo after landing and show what you're made of. War mode. Camp Jack on map added. Bomb kit. All players spawn with 20 grenades, a molotov, level 3 gear and a frying pan. The match will take place with this, within a small static play zone. Three ten man VSS kit. <laughs> See, th th this stuff is really good, right? When they're adding these different modes, but the problem with custom games is that not enough people play them. And unless I'm about to read something that says custom matches start automatically when a certain number of people are in the lobby, half the time when you go into a lobby and you want to play, you're waiting for the person who owns the lobby to start, and they don't, and then people start leaving. <sighs> bug fixes lots of bugs you, you are skin right okay so good so big update um big update to sandhock it's gonna be interesting um it's a shame that there's no ranked solo mode but you know in my feelings i think they should get rid of ranked just to have a proper ranked um leaderboard in normal games um <laughs> um but there we go i'll put the link to the official show notes down below oh and also as a rather sad note and this is another kind of a I, I, I know I, I shouldn't be negative about PUBG I, you know, I kind of promise not to be but they're shutting down the PUBG forums okay where often you would go well I would go for official news um, and uh, and information and they're basically transferring everything over to either uh, Reddit which is a nightmare I think to go through and find stuff because you have all the user generated stuff in there as well and then on their official website so they they are in effect saying look we don't want a forum where where you can post questions and get answers, um, which I think you know is a real shame. So I've used I use their um, the PUBG official forum and it a forum doesn't cost anything to keep going and I'm sure their community managers can spend five minutes a day looking at it and make sure people aren't doing nasty things. But there we go, the forum's going too. But console update eight point one on the PTS for console right now on the PC right now public PC tomorrow. Uh, public consult at the end of the month. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.